Community Health Care Group. But the key person in all our talk today is the patient or the consumer, as Michael Dowling referred to them. And we're now joined by Honorary Professor Derek Stewart, OBE, and he's going to speak about the importance of the patient perspective when future healthcare is being designed. And he'll take a few questions afterwards too. Thanks, Derek. Thank you. Uh, dear Goich, hello. Now what? Uh, right, hold on. We'll, we'll do that again. I lost my voice many years ago. You've still got yours. So I'll say, dear Goich, hello. And then when they're filming it, they can start from this point. Okay, so, dear Goich, hello. <laughs> hello, hello. See, after lunch, you need a little bit of wakening up and being ready for things. <laughs> so I'm going to try a little bit more of the Irish Gaelic and say, uh, good of ma, a good. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Imar. Thank you to all school. McGalliver, I'm still practicing that one. Uh, but I do like the new name because we live in uh, England and people would say, what does NUI stand for? What's NUI about? University of Galway. That's what it does. It says what it is on the tin. Thank you to Professor Kieran Mohogarty, President of the University, to Professor Martin O'Donnell for inviting me here today. Uh, and for my great honour of being awarded the honorary professorship. Uh, it's opened doors, it's made people think, it's made people view not just this university, but I always view the patient. Uh, so my first. Oh, yes. So we've talked about future care, we've talked about the future of health, education, research and innovation. But that future is you as the students who are here at this university. So if you're students, would you put your hands up, please? I'm not going to pick on you. It's all right. So just show your hands if you're studying here. We have nobody. Anybody? <laughs> a couple of people. A couple of people. You are the future leaders. Within an occurred a few years, you will be the people standing up here. I hope you will take with you the things that have been said this morning and throughout the rest of the day. One of the most important things about this strategy is the fact that it's been put together by all of the people who work here, who are studying here, and a variety of other people. What makes it special is that it merges principles with practicalities. That's vital. What makes it special is you've turned up today. I've been at meetings for the launch of a strategy, which you're lucky if you get half a dozen people. It says something about this organization that is really, truly trying to make a difference, not just to the people of Galway, not just to the people of Western Ireland. The influence this university has is worldwide, and I hope to touch on that through today. So some of the initiatives you're doing I'm involved with in one way or another. Um, and also things like the patient public and involved uh, network. And if you don't know about that, please look it up. So I put a few slides together and I'll start with those. The first one on the, your left is the High Line in New York City. And it was quite odd because I didn't really realize that Michael Dowling was going to be speaking at the point when I put this in. It's basically the reinvention of the pavement by an American architect called Liz Diller. And what she wanted to do was, how do you make a place in New York City where people want to go? And to my mind, these are like a new commons. The commons where we used to go to you know, hang up washing, to meet other people, to graze, right, our animals. But actually, fundamentally, it was a space for us to talk to each other. The next one along is the enclosure walk. I live in Nottingham, and I was out recently for a walk. When the 
dire conditions at the end of the 19th century. The public health people and the elders in the city realized we needed to create space, green space, where people could get outside and talk and just breathe in because the conditions they were living in were dire. And this takes you around the various places in the city. But you do that already. You've got the prom here. I've never seen so many people about keeping themselves fit. As Michael said this morning, health is what happens when people get ill, but actually it's not really. Health is trying to prevent people getting ill. And using this as a Selena Swanta, right, a health place is just brilliant to see, right? Uh, I didn't go for a swim for the, the, the full moon the other night. I was encouraged to, but I didn't. Uh, the last one is from Glasgow, where I studied and worked for a while. And that's Glasgow Green, where they still have the washing lines out and the washing poles, because it's the right of every citizen to go and hang out their washing. And I want to talk to you about some of that washing we hang out. One of them is about, basically, how come we've lost contact with each other? And by that I mean that as the public, and you've become cleverer and done more brighter things, you've sort of left us behind. So if I take my own cancer journey, and I didn't see this at the time, didn't think, but it almost got to a point where my attitude was, it doesn't matter if I smoke, it doesn't matter if I drink, the health service sorts me. But how did I get there? And how was it after my cancer? I started to say, well, do you know what? I need to change. So I've got a better diet. I try to avoid my doctors. Not, I, I, I like them, but I try to avoid them because if I've kept myself healthy and fitter with a better diet, I don't need to bother them. So when I do need to bother them, it's a better relationship. But how did it come to that point? And I think some of it's about the science getting more complicated, the research getting more complicated, and we've lost touch. Also, I think we've stopped saying to people that we share some of the responsibility. So a lot of this talk is about how do we create spaces where we meet, talk to each other, and have these conversations. I like this quote for a number of reasons. You can read it. I love using PowerPoint because it gets me to put slides up and I don't need to talk. So you can read it and I get a little break. There's a lovely thing because I think it's about what Michael was saying this morning again. If you're just treating people to work and teaching people to work in silence, they'll only work in silence. They'll treat people empirically rather than the whole person. I think we need to get back to that. The real shocker is, this is from a book in 1937. So we missed something along the way. So I invite you to read the book. Oh, there was a bit on that. It said of the doctors, they're always in a rush. Nothing changes, does it? And Michael's coming, somebody else is morning. I don't care how rushed you are to get to me. Walk in the room. Take that moment to breathe, walk in the room, because I don't want to see you rushed. Aye. Some of the changes I've just spoken about, and I talked today about this from a patient perspective, but I suspect that some of these are leaving our healthcare professionals, our allied health professionals, our nurses, our midwives, and our doctors. They're leaving them behind as well because this stuff just gets more and more complicated. We're just doing a piece of work in the UK where with multi-stage, multi-arm trials, uh, but with all trials, we've got to feed back the results to patients. And people are not in the health service go, what do you mean to say that didn't happen before? No, it didn't. 
And we've got to give them a loose summary. And if we're going to give them a loose summary, we help not just the patients, we help our professional colleagues. Because if you've got a loose summary, you can explain the research to me as well. So I think that's why we need to work. And I haven't even touched on the technology, AI, which Connor brilliantly touched on this morning, and data. And to the team that are here and support me doing this, you've realized I've lost track of the talk. I'm just going down by the, the, the slides. So I'm part of a piece of work which is public involvement in trial methodological research. And we were looking at rapid reviews and the uncertainties of that. So you suddenly, from that little statement, maybe gather that my patient involvement isn't just looking at healthcare and the journey, it's actually throughout the whole of the process. Nikita Burke, who's across here, has been doing some research about the public involvement. And what she drew on was this space, creating a safe space. So it's not good enough to just say, could you tell us what you think about your care? You need to find spaces where we have those conversations. If you always invite me to the hospital or to the academic unit, who feels most comfortable in that environment? And that's you. So I think you have to learn to come to me a bit more often. And please don't use the words hard to reach. If my colleague Della, who's Afro-Caribbean, was here, she would be saying, I'm not hard to reach. I've lived here all my life. Just knock on my door and ask me, right? So Nikita's work begins to get us into that commons. And in this, you need to give us time. If you just come and tell us about your problem or the research you're doing, sometimes I slightly lose the will to live. So give me a bit of breathing space to talk and find out. Then things that makes it become familiar and dependable. Then there's a sense of belonging and that we're part of something. But more importantly, I'm not the problem, I'm part of the solution. And where you are today with your strategy, it cannot stop in this room. It cannot stop with these two days. You've said clearly it's the beginning of a conversation. And those conversations have to take out their place out there with the local population, in the clubs, in the pubs, on the walks, and everything. If it just stays here, then we've changed very little. So what are some of the things? Because in your strategy, you talk about a fresh start. I would say it's building on great foundations. So if I've got, have I got a couple of minutes more? Oh, you do, yeah, yeah. yeah. So here's some of the things that you've been doing in Galway, supported by Health Research Board, coordinated from here. So the People's Trial, this was inventive, innovative, just what do you want a trial to be about? So often it's, we'll make that decision because we know better than you. It's my money, it's our money through donation or taxation. So why aren't we asking the public? This said, it was actually about helping our people understand a randomized control trial. But the best thing ever was, or I think it was the best thing ever, was at the end of it, they said, how would you like to be told the results? How would you like to be told what happened? Wow, that's just, I've never heard another trial anywhere in the world wanting that. The STAR program, schools, you watch the videos, because COVID meant I didn't get to come. Uh, you watch the videos, these youngsters ask questions. And when they ask questions, they're then given a research framework. So they use a critical analysis. They do all the things that good research does. And then they talk like researchers. Well, I'm not sure the p-value was right. What? Out of a child? 
Research shouldn't belong to researchers and the academics. It's ours. Priority studies I've talked about informed health choices. During COVID, doctors working on frontline could actually call us up and say, what's the latest evidence that I can give to a patient? PPI Ignite Network, I spoke of them earlier, Martha's here, Adele had to go. Just this conference, there's a festival going on in this fortnight. Thousands of patients giving of their experience. I think I touched them all. So, as I was preparing for this, I wasn't reading medical books. And for students and for you working here in the university, would you encourage the students who come through here to read books that are not just about medicine? Because actually, although I say they're not about medicine, every one of those books is about health. And sometimes we need to think about that. Would you also please tell the trainee doctors who are coming through and the nurses, midwives, health, would you look after yourselves, please? Keep yourselves fit and healthy, because that's in my best interest. And it's in our best interest. Would you read? Would you retain a curiosity? Do not leave this university thinking, I know what I need to know. It's only the beginning of a journey. When you go out there, stay involved with research. Stay active with research, because it keeps you curious, it means you will work network with colleagues and hospitals that are research active have better outcomes. Makes sense. Finally, it's said already, if you haven't heard this, for the public good, not for careers. Doug Altman's, we need less research, better research done for the right reasons. The patients of the public are here and ever I love John Messes. Never be afraid to get into trouble. Good trouble. Necessary trouble. That's what we need to do. And by that, it doesn't mean that I come along and hit you and, and get into that trouble. It's, where is their trouble? How can we solve it together? Finally, get out. Get out and have a walk. If you haven't been on the map for the healthy hearts, go and do them. Do you remember that expression? I've got Two of my best doctors, my left leg and my right leg. <laughs> and finally, food, go out of a meal. Patients should no longer be misunderstood, right? Get out to the misunderstood, Heron. Thank you, Declan, for paying for the meal. It was really nice. We had a great time. But I say that because all the research is starting to say the gut and the microbiome uh, biome of the gut has actually got more significance for loads of other diseases. So look after your guts, look after yourselves. Thanks for your time. <laughs>